previous video, we introduced phrase structure rules for constraining what types of constituent structures are permitted in the language. We don't want to write a different rule for every possible structure in the language, but rather to capture the kind of generalizations that a speaker might be making when acquiring the language. One method available for making generalizations about what type of constituent structures are allowed in the language is to formally note that certain nodes are optional. We've been analyzing an English noun phrase with four words, the little brown dog, and also one with just a single noun, spot. If we consider further phrases like the little dog, the brown dog, the dog, little dogs, little brown dogs, we can see that every word in the noun phrase appears to be optional except the head noun. One way to represent this flexibility in the grammar is to put parentheses around each optional node in the phrase structure rule to mark it as optional. This is not the only way to analyze the structure of noun phrases in English. You could also make an assumption that each rule can only have two daughter nodes. This would eliminate the need for optional nodes, but it also introduces complexity elsewhere in the grammar. The formalism of LH LFG allows a varied representation of different hypotheses about how to best analyze syntactic structure. There are a few principles that are widely accepted. One is the expectation that a phrase structure rule should normally have a head node that defines the lexical category of the mother node, as we've seen so far. This principle is called endocentricity. Endo means within because the lexical category of the mother node comes from within the constituent. In LFG, it is also possible to model constituent structures that do not have a head in this sense. For example, where the N and V structures combine at the top of our constituent structure, we might not want to say that the sentence is either a noun phrase or a verb phrase, but rather something else entirely. In this case, it is not uncommon to see a phrase structure rule that uses the letter S to represent the highest node in a clause, which does not receive its lexical category from any of its daughter nodes, but rather the mother node is assigned a special category by phrase structure rule. Another useful thing to know about phrase structures is that when more complex phrase structures are formed, their different parts are given particular names. Let's take the noun phrase, the bag of marbles, and give it a more complex analysis. This time we will claim that the noun and the prepositional phrase following it of marbles form a noun constituent, and that constituent combines with the determiner to form another noun constituent at a higher level. Note that we are using a triangle over the prepositional phrase of marbles. This is a way to signal that there may be more complex structure here that we are not including in our analysis. If we say that this is a noun phrase, then notice that there is a lower level of the noun phrase with the noun node and the preposition node, and there is a higher level of the same noun phrase with the noun node and a determiner node. In this type of structure, the lower sister of the head node is called a complement and the upper sister of the head node is called a specifier. We can also label the head nodes that make up the skeletal spine of this noun phrase. The lowest noun node is zero, then level one and level two. For historical reasons, it is common practice to call level one n-bar and label it with either a vertical bar after the n or a horizontal bar over the n, and level two is often seen written as np. The ideas we've just covered were incorporated in a set of hypotheses about syntactic structure known as X-bar theory. There are still debates over what parts of X-bar theory are useful in syntactic analysis, but the labels complement and specifier have proven useful enough in their own right to stick around. The principle of endocentricity discussed earlier is also a key element of X-bar theory that still has widespread application. Another part of X-bar theory was the idea that all syntactic structures could be considered identical if it is assumed that they always have a series of two heads under the highest node, no matter how complex the actual phrase is. This is no longer a widely held assumption, at least not in a strict sense. But because of this idea, it is common to see phrase structures with seemingly superfluous nodes in the tree, like this one here. With this video, we'll end our discussion of constituent structure. And in the next video, we begin discussing functional structure, which is where we model grammatical features involved in agreements.